Hey class, Mr. G going over some stuff for curriculum now. So I've got my book here, which is my playbook. And uh, for my playbook, we're going to be deep diving into some stuff on curriculum. And if you guys have questions throughout this entire process, please don't forget to do two things for me. One, subscribe, because this is going to be an ongoing thing uh, between this and the other art videos that I'm making. But also uh, throw down in the comments if you guys have a question or an idea or a um, a conundrum of any type, uh, throw it down in the comments below. Happy to answer you guys' questions. It, uh, it makes that ongoing conversation much more palatable for all of us. Hey class, so today I've got my playbook here and today we're gonna be talking about the Curriculum Chronicles. All right, so what are we talking about with this? Well, I've gotten a lot of emails, um, Facebook, and this is really for uh, my Facebook people, that Curriculum has a lot of questions to it. So today we're gonna be looking at a few tidbits from uh, some notes that I've got from previous years that I've did curriculum. I've, I've done curriculum for like a decade. <laughs> and the reason I want to talk about this is because I have a lot of people have questions when they look at this sort of text and they're like, well, we got to start working on this stuff. Uh, they have questions. So let's, let's break those things down. All right. First things first, let's got to go to the standards. What are we looking at students works and what are we thinking about when we're going over their stuff. So here I have uh, a pr the production guidelines for the state of Georgia. Overall thing with production is what kind of actions are the students producing in class? What kind of things are they gonna be creating and doing in class that you are going to assess and that you're going to be looking at those descriptors as you're grading them? Now these ones are the kindergarten production grade ones. So they're really, I mean, I got the elementary one just because it was at the top of the list. There's no reason why I grabbed this one, honestly. Uh, but you have the code here, which is visual arts, VA, uh, kindergarten, PR for production and number one. So this is the first standard. So that's what this thing is here, that code. That's what that code means. Now breaking the standards down, and that's a phrase that a lot of people in curriculum writing and curriculum analysis, what the, they it's breaking this thing down to make it plain English so that when you start putting it into play that it makes some sort of sense. All right, so uh, for the kindergartners, they're gonna create artworks based upon personal experiences and selected themes. That's one standard. Now, how are we going to apply that standard in the overall curriculum? All right, when we're writing curriculum, we're talking about curriculum, things that we have to think about first is this. Now, I wanted to start with that because we gotta think about the most basic elements of curriculum writing, and that is you work in a district, county, province, um, wherever a large group of people live and you have schools and you gotta figure out what to do with those kids, um, you live in a space all together. Now, in that space, that space is then gonna be divided up into sections. So you have this section, this section, this section. So out of these four sections, you have, let's just say, four schools. Now, out of those four schools, they all should be teaching something similar as far as the curric curriculum goes, and that's gonna be for elementary, middle, and high. Now, out of those sections, we can say that these kids up here and these kids down here are going to be two different types of kids. And then you might have what's also called transient kids, where these kids that live over here to start with, and then they move up here, and then two weeks later they move over here, and then uh, sometime in, in within less than a year they move somewhere over here. Those are your transient populations. You need to make sure that you have a cohesion, that everybody that's working and that's teaching and school, students that are going to these schools, they all receive the same curriculum, they all receive the same lessons so that there's a cohesion if they leave from this school and they go to this school and then they move over here, move over here, that at any moment, they're still going to be not, that's not going to interrupt their learning. That's not going to interrupt what the students are trying to achieve at the end of the day. So while we're doing curriculum, we have curriculum and it starts on day one and it ends on day 180. Now I'm basing this on the typical school year, which is 180 days, 180 contact days with a student. And during that time frame, how many times you're gonna see them, what duration you're gonna see them, what are you gonna do with them, whatnot. First off, on that cohesion, everything that's being taught in this framework here should apply to all students. If you know that some students that are up in this district up here, in this section of the district, these kids are really 3D-based students because they have 3D-based art teachers. 
These students down here are really 2D based art teachers. You need to make sure that there is some sort of cohesion to where the 3D people also teach 2D and the 2D people also teach 3D. There needs to be a discussion as to what things, what elements need to come into play so that they can ensure that all students are receiving the same quality education that you would expect in the entire area. Now, if you have people who are better at drawing and you have people that are better at sculpture or ceramics, like me, or painting, they all need to be interlaced together. So I would always pair up a drawing person with a ceramics person or sculpture person with a painting person or a ceramics person with a painting person. So as long as you're putting some sort of a 2D person and a 3D person together, you'll ensure that there's going to be a cohesion across those curriculums. Now, that doesn't mean that you can only, that that always has to work. I mean, mix it up, but you want to make sure that everybody in here receives the same quality education. Now, the students that are up here that might be above scale, where they are, they have assortment of supplies, they have lots of parental help, they have lots of uh, school pride, backing, whatever, and down in the other section, they don't have that. You also need to make sure that the students are, are still being treated the same. So even so, if you're having to write those um, SLOs, which are called SLOs, so you need to change the name, um, those exams where it's the student learning objectives uh, test. It's, it's a horrible name. I didn't come up with this. This is somebody at the state department or fed department who thought that this was a good idea. This is, this is just a horrible idea. Um, but where, where you're having students all engage in the same educational activity, same educational activity, C test. I think it sounds better. FYI, if somebody from the state department sees this, um, so by learning these things, make sure that everybody is working on the same page. I know I'm, I'm reiterating it, but it's one of those things that when I've done curriculum design over the, in the past, it has come up and it has been just one of those long, arduous debates where it's like, well, my students are going to do this. My students can't do that. Well, make sure that all students can do it. That's the key is that all students were here for the students and here for the engagement of the students. Do it for the students. Don't do it for yourself. Um, now, within that 180 days of contact time, and this is all the basics of when, when we start doing curriculum, how you need to start breaking stuff down. In 180 days, you're seeing those students, let's say you're on a semester, which means you have a, and this is just typical spring and fall terms. And during those terms, you have during the spring, they're with you like 93 days to fall like 87 days. And it fluctuates, but it's usually less than 90 and like slightly more than 90 on this side. Um, so if we break that down by quarter, you have 45 days and 45 days. And again, I'm just doing it by the 90 just to make it as simplistic as possible in the math end. Um, if you see those students, then 87 days to teach the entire curriculum to some schools that are seeing students for 45 days to teach the entire curriculum to some schools that are seeing them on every other day, which means a Monday, Tuesday, Friday, because I've had, I've had different, I've had different things. All right. So let's do T and TH and then M. No, no, no. Let's do Wednesday, Friday. And then everybody goes to it on Monday. Um, I've, I've had students that came to me Tuesday, Thursday, and then also came to me, uh, and then another set came on Wednesday and Friday. Everybody saw me on Monday. And then I've had the rotation where it was like one week, they come to me Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then the next week they come to me, uh, Tuesday, Thursday. And then the following week, I'll see the, the opposite class the other days and supposedly evens out. It never evens out. Um, but then in the shortest amount of time possible that you're having to teach the entire curriculum that you're writing. For those that teach a semester or a quarter or to this version, which is 27 days, 27 days of contact, 27 days of contact time, which let's just go with the basic class is an hour. And that's on the 
more gracious in. So what? how are you going to be able to break down that entire curriculum to those set amount of times? Those, those are the things that you need to have in the forefront of your mind before you even start figuring out what of all these paper things do we need to add, write down. We need to think about how much these students we're going to see, we're going to interact with, and we're going to be dealing with. Um, so first things first, figure out how many, what what size your district is, how many times these students are going to be seen, how many different schools are going to have to interact with this. Does everybody, is everybody on the same page as far as what they're being able to bring to the table? So there is cohesion across the board with everybody. Um, and let's forget about our SLOs and think about the C's, which is student educational activity instead of the student learning objective. This sounds better. Just saying. Um, so think about this stuff as we move forward. Okay, I hope that you guys got something out of this tutorial. And as always, if you guys have questions or comments, don't forget to throw those down in the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe, please and uh, please and thank you. And um, as always, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys.